Next up, you know, almost immediately, and we'll have a cocktail break after that, we have a very tiny session, just about 10 minutes, but it's going to invigorate you because it is about a very unusual new phenomenon. And when I say unusual new phenomenon, it's actually a phenomenon as old as Indians ever existed, which is the phenomenon of arranged marriage. Why it is a new phenomenon is that it has escalated to a level that many of us perhaps are not cognizant of at all. It is today perhaps the greatest industry in this country that we don't know of. And there's a young filmmaker who has delved into that world and brought a film that is riveting in its insights and its sociological insights about who we are as a society and how frenzied we are. Not just about marriage, but about acceptability. This little film is an absolute gem which shows just how much we want to bench press ourselves into a CV that will be acceptable. So before I call Ananda, Anandana Kapoor onto the stage, we're going to show a short clip, a trailer of that film, which will really take you into a world that, at least for us, was a real surprise. I did not know that this is where we have reached. So ladies and gentlemen, Ananda Kapoor's film, Much Ado About Nothing. Regularly, I'm sending proposals also. Last time, also, there was one profile of Rajesh Gupta. MBA finance me kiya hua New York se. But, uh, Miss, uh, apne mother se meri baat hai, jo bol rahe hain, nahi wani. Abhi phone pe baat karenge, fir wo attraction wagera ho jata hai, fir baad mein problem ho jati hai. But unfortunately, Ritu didn't like his photographs. इस पैकेज में हम लोग चार्ज करते हैं वन लाख रुपीज एट द टाइम ऑफ एनरोलमेंट वन लाख रुपीज जब केस मेच्योर हो जाता है हमारे पास सर पूछना था आप अपनी फैमिली में किसी के लिए मैच देख रहे हैं अभी So in our family, the two of us are looking for a girl. Mummy ji and daddy ji, both of them are looking for a girl as well. We've gone to all the matrimonial or the, those uh, marriage bureaus take place and they'll conduct little programs that people from different communities come together. We've been to those. We've even been to one of those Ari Samaj Mandars. They conduct those uh, marriage programs. We've been to those. We've been to Hyderabad as well. They conduct these at least once a year. We've gone to those. We've spread the news around all over our family members or anybody that we know, friends. We've spread the news around. And we've been looking around. Almost every Saturday and Sunday, this is what we do. My name is Sujata. I'm Seema Sharma, Jitter Cheswal, Namit Che, Akansha Chawla. And I uh, came here for the matrimonial purpose of my daughter in Koshal. बहुत interest आते हैं लेकिन problem ये हो रही है कि सारे जो interest हैं वो thirty five plus से हैं. I think one or two percent of the girls would be who are like in early 30s, otherwise they get offer from either divorced or separated or in their late 30s or early 40s. It doesn't work for me, honestly. Yeah. I'm 38. I'm going to be 38 in December and 37 at the moment. And uh, see, if girls are in their late 30s or early 40s, it doesn't really bother me. But what bothers me about their physical appearance. Girls are not too conscious about their health these days, right? I mean, I get girls who are in their late 30s and they look like aunties. You know, I mean, uh, it doesn't work for me. मेरे बेटे की हाइट है पांच फुट नौ इंच तो हमें पांच फुट दो इंच से लेकर पांच फुट छह इंच तक लड़की चाहिए और हाइट इस फाइव फीट नाइन इंचेस मैंने तो फीते से नापा नहीं है इन माय फैमिली जस्ट मी माय मम एंड नानी सो देस नो मेल मेंबर
So if I say I belong to well-to-do family or have nice, fam uh, good, uh, you know, background, that doesn't mean anything to them. From uh, good background, they basically mean that we should have 5-6 people in our house. Some jobs in the government, in the government, जज हो, इंजीनियर हो, पुलिस में हो तो बीट चलेगा, but आज भी होने चाहिए। So a lot of people they have preset criteria about a guy's financial condition and his family status, and only then they want to move ahead and take the conversation forward. So the very question puts me off. I mean, are you here for a business or are you here for a lifetime commitment? और अर्जुन की शादी में अपने हिसाब से ऐसी जगह करा दूंगा कि जहाँ क्या पता उसका हाथ पकड़ ले परमात्मा करे उसकी लाइफ बन जाए। बिल्कुल। आजकल जमाना है कि अपने पैरों पे स्टैंड हो जाए तो वो अपने पैरों पे स्टैंड भी हो जाए और उसकी इच्छा जो कोई आय कसर खाए बगैर कोई काम होता नहीं। Priorly, he should be religious. Rich. Government's man. I don't want to see the girls. I don't want to see the girls. I don't want to see the girls. We don't want any dowry. And I'd also like to point out that I'm Anshik Mangleek. Of course, I almost forgot to mention my four of my maternal uncles. They're all settled in the US. They're US citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anandana, Anandana Kapoor. Good evening, everyone. I think uh, a filmmaker's biggest reward is when everybody gets your jokes and laughs at the right places. So thank you all for joining in. <laughs> So, Nandana, we, we don't have much time, but I'd love to delve into, uh, you know, as I said, this world that you've uh, uncovered for us. Two questions. One, what was the wildest things that you discovered when you started making this film? You know, what are the heights that people are going to? What was the absurdest extremity that people went to? And secondly, being a, you know, unmarried woman yourself, uh, was it pressure from your own family to, that got you to make this film? And how difficult was it to negotiate this world of uh, arranged marriages as a single woman yourself? Okay. Uh, all right. So to tackle the first question, uh, I think the craziest thing that people do um, physically is to go in for cosmetic surgery. Uh, it, uh, some of them uh, deal with such extreme cases of uh, low self-esteem that they are able uh, to convince people their parents to spend a lot of money on what I call self-mutilation. Uh, a lot of them do what are seemingly harmless things like getting their photographs airbrushed. But I think the other extreme that we discovered, and you know, I've co-directed this film uh, with Geetika, was the fact that uh, we looked at how even men undergo rejection. And I think it is how we dwell on rejection, and that causes people to go in for grooming classes. People learn how to bite into a sandwich, how to hold a cup straight both men and women, uh, they learn how to walk. Uh, some of them go in for extra degrees. Uh, and so there is this absolute rejection of who you are. Whereas this entire process is supposed to be about finding a person who fits you. Uh, and I think that contradiction and the sorrow that it causes, uh, you know, was something that really echoed across the film. And so this film is not just about people wanting to find partners, but it's also about the pathos and the humor. Because when we are laughing at the people on screen, we have to admit that we have heard this or said this to ourselves. So that laughter is actually a laughter on us. Uh, and uh, 
I also remember we had started with uh, one of uh, the characters for the film who then backed out later. Her father had a lifetime subscription to one of the portals. A lifetime subscription. Now, is that hope or is that pessimism? He was preparing for many marriages. <laughs> well, he had one daughter and, uh, you know, ironically, he was situated in Agra and uh, he would sit at the Taj and keep looking at numbers and, yeah. Um, now, in terms of being a single woman and negotiating the film, I think the film arose because it's something which is all around us. You know, we talk of it all the time. I call it India's national pastime. Uh, it's our hobby. It's unofficial, it's not listed anywhere, but we do it all the time. And single men and women are, uh, I think, considered people with disabilities. Uh, so they have to be chased and, you know, corrected. Uh, and as marriages fall apart, uh, the din to get more and more people married continues to sort of increase as well. And what was funny for me was that, uh, you know, you, we had um, Manoj and Aarti in the film here. So we were at the time Swayamber where we were kind of filming it. and. Uh, Manoj started following me to marry his brother. And it took me a lot of effort to tell him no. And this happened to me several times in the film because Geetika was already dating Yasir and you know, we stalled some part of the film to have them married off. But uh, I was chased all the time. And people wouldn't take no for an answer. And I remember once there was this uh, sick lady who came up to me and he said, can you see my son there? You know, he's the one in the pink pagri, I remember it verbatim. And I said, okay. So she said, uh, you know, he's, he's 22 and he's really nice and he listens to everything. So I said, I'm several years older than him. I don't think it's going to work. So she said, no, but I like you. And she chased me right, you know, for about two kilometers because I kept walking out of the complex at Film City and she kept following me. So uh, I think this, this obsession is there. But I really sort of feel and hope that this film enables people to step back and say, hey, is this sane? And can we accept people for who they are? And uh, it's very easy to go up on stage and say that I have a partner and things are okay. I, I do have a partner now. But the point is that when you work on things, when you try and build things up, uh, I think we're very unfair to individuals. And so, you know, a documentary is supposed to be political. But I think the personal in this sense uh, also requires reflection. You know, you just mentioned uh, the time swamver. Yeah. Is this, you know, like these stage swamvers? a new phenomenon or did I just miss the fact that it was happening? Uh, as I was just and, and did you just say the Times Swamver? So is the Times it's, Group yes, yes, hosting Swamver, yeah, marriages Swamver? Yeah, yeah. The Media House Times Group? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you have the classifieds, the matrimonials. And I was just telling um, um, Mrs. Dixit there that uh, essentially uh, it happens in a mall near you. You just need to look carefully. They're, they're happening in malls around you all the time. So, and that in itself is shocking because uh, you can see parents who put in their life savings, who come in as proxies for their children. And, you know, I, I also find it ironic that I say children because these are grown-up adults who have outsourced it or don't know that their parents are moonlighting uh, in these areas as, you know, marriage brokers. So, um, you know, and it's there from top to bottom. I mean, every part of me could be tweaked for me to be more amenable to another partner. And uh, people deal with rejection a lot. And I think class and caste boundaries, they sort of resurface a lot. So people used to say that, you know, your profession in that sense, you know, uh, the letter is the new class. But that's not true. When you really want to test a person's ability to be liberal, you need to see who they're marrying uh, and, and what are their choices. And this is where the cookie crumbles, where the most progressive of people want, you know, a trophy wife and a millionaire man. So, yeah. yeah. So, Anandana, you, you mentioned, you know, this kind of tweaking of the body and the mind and the everything to fit into a marriage. I remember when we met last and we were speaking, you also said that people are hiring private detectives uh, to look into pe prospective marriage uh, partners. Uh, and that would seg you into the other film that Anandana has made, uh, you know, which is called Jasusni. And Anandana has looked at the world of female detectives and, uh, you know, what, what that community of people are and what they're doing and what is the social, sociological profile. Also, uh, impending bill that will put a lot of female detectives out of work. But before we get into that, uh, are marriages really prospective marriage partners hiring detectives to look at each other? Yeah, I think it's almost become commonplace. It, it's, it's as normal as brushing your teeth in the morning for some people. Uh, and they have a list and they send it off to their favorite PIs. And uh, a lot of women specialize in this because they can pose as your domestic worker, your aunt next door, or as a woman who needs a glass of water. And all they need to do is go in and ensure that they do what they call the assets check. Uh, and then they befriend, 
you know, you should be really, really worried because the person sitting next to you could be a detective. <laughs> and there are wives who moonlight as detectives and husbands don't know. Uh, there are husbands who have stakes as domestic, uh, I mean, as, um, you know, detectives and others don't know. So uh, they do this for assets. They do this for what they call character verification. And uh, people want to know what your sexual orientation is. Have you had relationships before? So people no longer use the word virginity, but they use the word uh, previous proximity. <laughs> And uh, nearest and dearest friends, that's, you know, a phrase that's used on the ground a lot. So, yeah, I mean, using a private eye to sort of snoop is part of the course. So, Anandana, just before we, we uh, break for cocktails, would you immerse us a little bit in this world of female detectives? What was the profile of women you met when you started to do this film? And what was this? You said it could be the woman next door, but were there any with the dark glasses and the trench coat? Or what was this profile of women? And what did you discover? And, and a little bit about this bill that may put them out of business. Sure. Uh, so Jasusni, look who's watching you, essentially tries to look at uh, an intergenerational shift in the profession of detectives. And uh, I, it's essentially women who are sort of talking of how they got into the profession and why they did. Uh, I did meet uh, somebody who I call Miss X in the film, who actually works for the UN. For the uh, UN. For the UN. <laughs> and uh, she's very upfront and direct. She says, sex for information is perfectly okay. Uh, and those were her opening lines to me. Uh, and uh, she didn't meet me directly. Uh, there were several decoy locations that I had to go to before I eventually met her. Uh, and uh, I have morphed her voice because she was very clear that she moves in what she calls elite circles. And uh, she said that her degree as an economist uh, was the most boring thing she'd done when she discovered that being a detective could get her into so many places and uh, spaces. And uh, I think what was interesting for me is that these women uh, work very, very hard at trying to blend in. So essentially, uh, a detective does not have any superpowers, but a detective is somebody who can be invisible and ordinary. And that to me is very intriguing, that you aspire all your life to look ordinary. You know, each of us here has done something to be presentable and has subconsciously or unconsciously highlighted some feature which we like. But they work very hard to really erase all of that. They take on various roles. Uh, and uh, their sense of what is public and private is also completely blurred. So these women are... Uh, you know, dropouts from journalism schools, some are just homemakers who got bored, some of them are, uh, you know, writers who decided to foray in and then decided the world was too dirty for them and stepped back out. And then there are young college girls who actually sort of get their monthly allowance by snooping on children for other parents. So, uh, so is most of the uh, hit jobs given for marriages or what is the kind of detective work they're meant to do? No, no, it's, it's, it's a wide-ranging world. It's love affairs and marriages. And there, there's that. There's corporate espionage. So, corporate espionage. Yes, you did mention there are CEOs, so you probably need to go up to one and ask. There might you be do some know PIs that you're putting women out of work, right? <laughs> <laughs> no CEO is going to hire a woman assistant now. But they have male operatives. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, they're not doing it all themselves. Uh, so there's corporate espionage, there's murder investigations, missing person cases, missing dogs and cats cases in some cases. And uh, so it's, it's everything related to human life where you can err or you may use a white lie. So It just sounds fascinating, Anandana, and I'm, I'd urge everyone to watch your film so you can tell us where we can find them. And just in, in like literally a minute, what is this bill and why is it coming which would put detectives out of business? Yeah, so uh, for the longest time we have what is known as the Private Investigators Regulation Bill. Uh, it's been passed by the parliament but it's pending uh, certain clause changes to become an act. Uh, and uh, essentially what it does is it sets a committee up to be able to decide who qualifies to be a private investigator. And that would mean it has this curious clause which says uh, you need to meet physical, academic, and ethical standards. And, you know, the, the range of women that I have who are from rotund to feeble to uh, women who are frail. nursing wounds, some have broken knees, none of them is going to fit this bill, uh, which seems to be kind of like a, you know, a police force kind of hangover. So all of this inventiveness, this jugar, this entrepreneurship will completely get driven away. So the film doesn't take that head on, but it sort of brings this up slowly because you learn to appreciate these women for their wit, their common sense, 
and for repeatedly being able to get out of difficult situations because of presence of mind. Uh, and then you step away and you realize that this could shift any day. Well, thank you very, very much, Anandana. You know, it's both worlds are fascinating. Both worlds live just below the surface of what we uh, engage with. And for me personally, it's terrifying that this bill is coming because uh, it actually doesn't stop surveillance. It just concentrates surveillance back in government hands. True. And I'd much rather that there's an army of women out there uh, surveilling the male and the female world than merely the government. Yeah, I, I but, just wanted to say that this happened because in Mumbai, they had tapped uh, the phones of a few politicians, and that was done by PIs. Uh, and that's when they decided to sort of say, who are these people and what all have they watched? And, and so, yeah. Well, thank you very, very much, Anandana, uh, for this little glimpse into very large My worlds. My pleasure. Thank you And for thank you so here. much. Thank we'll you, everyone. stop for a cocktail break. <laughs>